Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we are honored to be sitting down and speaking with Sylvan Lake Mayor Megan Hansen. Sylvan Lake is a vibrant lakeside community in Alberta with a high quality of living that respects the environment, provides diverse economic opportunities, and values efficient, inclusive, and transparent government. Sylvan Lakers are very proud of their community and enjoy access to recreational activities that are unique to the lakeside community, such as winter polar bear dips, ice fishing, skating on their beautiful lake during the winter, year-round event festivals, and firework shows. Watery activities like paddleboarding, kayaking, sailing, and even diving, beach volleyball, and so much more encompasses Sylvan Lake. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Sylvan Lake Mayor Megan Hansen. From the smallest village to the largest city across every region of the province, Alberta municipalities represents the communities where over 85% of Albertans live. AB Munis provides a united voice for 265 of Alberta's 330 municipalities, including summer villages, villages, towns, cities, and specialized municipalities. As Alberta's largest municipal group, AB Munis listens to municipal leaders and advocates for solutions to their common issues. Additionally, AB Munis supports local governments by providing services specially designed to meet their operational needs and they bring their members together regularly so they can share ideas and information so that their communities can thrive. Check out Alberta Municipalities at abmunis.ca and follow them on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, now called X. Mayor Hanson, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Before we get into the crux of the interview, I've got to ask you the same question I've asked every single person who's ever come on this show, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? I think that, I think that you're like a boomerang. <laughs> and uh, as a kid, I did a whole lot of volunteering that was what my parents did. It was, I sure spent a lot of Saturdays hustling tickets outside of Canadian Tire for one charity or another. And uh, you go off and you do all the things you do in your teens and your 20s. And generally, I think most kids kind of boomerang back to whatever they, whatever they grew up in. And it was exactly that. My parents were super involved in the community. That was how I was raised when I moved to Sylvan Lake uh, in my early 20s. There's not a lot of ways you can integrate yourself in a community if you're not athletic and you don't have kids at the time. So volunteering was what I knew and it was what I went back to and uh, just a neat way to kind of make friends and make connections. And eventually that grew into this. So how did that grow into this, which is municipal politics? Did you have an interest in politics prior to running three terms ago? Or was politics something that came later on in life? Or did people ask you to put your name forward? How did Megan's name come to be on that ballot in 20, if I'm doing my math here correctly, 2013, if I'm not mistaken? You're right. Uh, yeah, somebody asked me was really what it came down to. My dad actually was a municipal councillor. In those same years, uh, never when they lived at home, so it wasn't something I was ever really exposed to. And I, I volunteered with a bunch of great people who were currently on council. So they asked, hey, would you ever be interested? And I chatted with my dad. And he had said to me, Megan, if you ever have an interest, you're never going to get in the first time. You're 25 years old. You, you don't have a shot. But put your name in. Because then in four years from now, you can see if you're if you're truly interested the next round. Uh, so I did with his encouragement, and then along with those that were currently on council, we were volunteering and having a great time together. And I was already doing most of what they did. I sat on a number of town committees. That it was pretty easy to say, "Yeah, let's give it a try." Uh, here, so here I've, I got, I, I've got to ask this. I've got to ask the stupid question here for a second, but. Where's your father? Where was your father a municipal councillor in the area or a different province or where Cassidy where was he a municipal councillor? Castlegar, BC in the West Two Weeks. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Politics runs in blood, I guess, right? <laughs> Apparently. And never while I was at home. So it's not like we ever talked about it or I knew about it. It was just a thing he happened to do after I left town. But 
uh, I, I do think it runs in the blood. <laughs> so you, you were a councillor for two terms, and now this is your first term as mayor, and we're over halfway through your first term as a mayor. We have municipal leaders and municipal minded people who listen to the show on a regular basis. What advice would you give a potential candidate, a potential first term counselor to make their transition into public life as a municipal leader easier that you wish you would have known way back in 2013 when you first got on council? You know, I, I don't know that there's anything that different. You you have to truly love every bit of where you live. I think we have such an opportunity as municipal elected officials that every every day of work is falling a little bit more in love with the place you live. So Lake is such a rat community. I'm so lucky to get to see bits and corners of it that I wouldn't get to see normally. So just looking for the good stuff in it. There, there's tough days, but every day has something fantastic about it. And the the scale is not weighted to the back. You, you have to look for the good stuff. And and when you're not, it's probably time to get out. <laughs> I want to talk about the role of council for a few minutes now before we turn to Sylvan Lake as a whole. And I I, 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 I would I would gather a pretty educated guess that you've come to the realization after almost three terms in office that you're not pleasing 100% of the people with 100% of the issues that you vote on. And you're shaking your head for those who are listening. So I'm assuming I know where this answer is going to go, but I want to ask it anyway. How do you make the best decision for the community with the understanding that you're not going to please 100% of the people in Sylvan Lake with every issue you decide on? Yeah, you you never are. Um, if you are, you're probably doing it wrong. Really, it's, uh, it's a challenge. You, you have to look at all the information. Um, you have to look at the long term, what is going to be the best. We're, I'll, I'll give a specific project. Uh, we're working on a our Centennial Street, one of our main streets to downtown, it needs construction. Um, we'll be working on it in 2027. We're letting people know about it. And I, I can tell you we're hearing pretty loud and clear that um, some people are not thrilled with this project. It will be hard on our businesses. It will be an interruption to traffic flow in our downtown. Uh, but when you look at the plans and when you look at the engineering reports and when you look at the financial dollars and cents of putting it off too much further, and how much further it could deteriorate and the risks to uh, risk to people just walking down there in the state that it's currently in. You have to go forward with some of those unpopular projects sometimes because it's not necessarily uh, what's going to be the easiest that specific year. The easiest would be putting this off until I am no longer in this role. <laughs> but uh, everything else says the smart choice is to do it. And you have to make those tough decisions sometimes. You have to go forward if it's the best thing for the community. And I know from past projects uh, that have been challenging to go through after they're done, it is so appreciated that our community is able to use those streets just like they should in every place in Sylvan Lake. Our business owners see more traffic after it's been done. Uh, we see less emergency costs because we've been proactive. It is the, the wisest decision, just not always the most popular. Do you, do the decisions get easier to make after almost 11 years in office now being able to say, okay, we know we're going to get pushback on this project. Let's just talk about the project that you talked about, Centennial Street, which is the main corridor through Sylvan Lake, knowing that it is going to be a benefit to the community in the long term. For the short term, there is going to be pains. Do you look at decisions that you have to make and have to put it through a filter to say, okay, I know there's going to be pushback. I know there's going to be anger, but in the long term, this is going to make our community better. Do those decisions get easier as time goes by, or do you still challenge and battle against yourself a little bit and say, okay, is this going to be beneficial in the short term to deal with the headaches that might come on the flip side, knowing that the headaches tomorrow are going to be sunshine and roses two years from now? I, I don't think it ever gets easier, but I do think a little perspective helps and having some history of past projects and knowing that uh, that we made it through as a community that there was a benefit, it does. It adds a lens of uh, just the reality of how that's worked out before. So that's not really the answer. But... <laughs> no, understandable. But I want to, so 
11 years in office, you you know the jurisdictional role that the municipality plays, even though we're sort of going through this weird change in Alberta right now with a few different bills, but we're going to talk about that later, but we'll just talk about the jurisdictional role that you know that you have to play in everyday lives. The municipality has a role to play, the province has a role to play, and the federal government has the role to play. Now, I was in Sylvan Lake last year. I was... I, Came for a little bit of a tour because I wanted to see what Sylvan Lake, because I heard about this great community and I'd never been. So I went and did a little tour through Sylvan Lake. Had the pleasure of talking to a few people. And I would assume, and I'm saying this is an assumption, that they probably are apathetic when it comes to what's going on at City Hall. I've watched some of your council meetings. There's not a lot of people who usually show up in any community, nonetheless. Do you get a sense that people understand the role that the municipality plays in Sylvan Lake and what the province plays in Sylvan Lake and what the federal government plays in Sylvan Lake? Or do you get a sense that there is a blurring of jurisdictional lines that people are asking you as mayor about education issues, about health care issues, even though that's not your purview? Oh, it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it, the, the waters are murky. It is a challenge, and you know more and more I, I find that even even knowing this role really well, sometimes uh, when we get those frequent requests, we do blur those lines and have those conversations with the provincial government, things that are outside of our realm, because we feel like, hey, we've heard about this from enough residents, we need to talk about it. But then it does make it complicated because that resident will report back, we had a conversation with the minister about your concern, and then you become the go-to person on that item. So I, I don't know that we always help that. Uh, to be fair, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty hazy. Although, you know, I think that it, people do have an understanding of what those true local responsibilities are more than what, uh, more than what you think. They know who to call when their garbage isn't collected and when there's a pothole. And if anything, we're blamed for a few things that are outside of our jurisdiction. But I think if there's any level of government that most residents understand, it's local. So before we turn to Sylvan Lake, I have one final question, and it's about the, the 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 life of a municipal politician. How hard is it for you to go in and grab milk on a Friday night and not come out by talking to someone for 25 minutes? Because you are the closest to the people. You are the government of proximity. You, they probably will know you more often than they know their MP or their MLA. So people will see you in the grocery store and say, oh, it's the mayor. So let's go talk about my issue that I have. Is it hard to run in and grab milk these days? Yeah, um, grocery delivery is really a, a <laughs> blessing. So, but okay, looking at the positives, that also goes both ways. Um, yeah. I'm a mom of a whole bunch of kids, and I have a whole community who's helping me raise them because I don't know that I could do it on my own. And uh, it it works both ways. Sometimes you get stopped in the grocery store for an extra conversation. Uh, but also sometimes my kid has gone rogue and is four aisles over and somebody who I don't know who knows me and my family uh, is stopping and redirecting them back to mom. It, it really takes a village and there's a bit of give and take with that, which I, I appreciate. Awesome. So I'm going to turn to the town of Sylvan Lake as a whole now. And before I do that, I'm going to preface this as I always do on the show. This, this is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not even a policy of council. This is the mayor's opinion and her opinion alone. She has one vote on council and this is her opinion. It may line up, but at the end of the day, it's not a motion. Mayor Hansen, in your opinion, as of recording this today, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing Sylvan Lake today? Um, it's a good question. Housing is one that we're talking about a lot right now, uh, which is one that, that in many aspects falls outside of our jurisdiction. One that with a lot of opportunity in, but we, we do find housing a challenge. We've been really lucky. We just received a very large um, housing accelerator fund grant that will help us with this, but we have a very diverse set of incomes in Silver Lake. We have executive and oil field level jobs, and we have service level jobs, and we don't necessarily have the housing to match that. It's really a gap for us that I hope we I hope we see some infill in, because really anyone that wants to live here should be able to. And I hear of uh, folks that have lived in Silver Lake for many, many years and aren't able to find a new rental property at the same rate or at an affordable rate, and they have to go to other communities. Which, which is sad for me. If you want to be a Sylvan Laker, you should be able to. 
So you, 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 you kicked it right out of the park there by saying that housing is not traditionally a municipal issue, but more and more municipalities are dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis because the federal and provincial governments are asking the municipalities to do more to help start more home buildings. What is Sylvan Lake doing today to help alleviate the issue of housing for tomorrow? We, as I mentioned, the grant, we've been incredibly blessed with that, which has allowed us to kickstart a number of projects that probably wouldn't be something we could have taken on before this. There might have been a couple. Some of that comes with uh, changing some of our land use zoning. Some of that comes with direct kickbacks to people who are developing the type of housing that we're looking for in Sylvan Lake incentives, interest-free loans for people that want to develop secondary suites. Uh, we're really diving in with both feet when it comes to housing right now. In order to receive the funds, we had to come up with a seven-step action plan, and all of these things will be implemented over the next year. So it's it's pretty aggressive. So I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate with you for a second, if you don't mind, because um, every community that I've spoken to housing seems to be an issue but there's always the people who move to communities especially outside of the larger metropolitan cities move to communities to get away from that sort of diversification that infill that we're talking about the nimbyism if you will how do you balance the growth of your community the needs of your community whether it be housing whether it be diverse types of housing with the people who say I, I get it, but I want Sylvan Lake to stay the same. I've moved here for a reason, and I don't want to have to move again to go find my forever home because I love the way that Sylvan Lake already feels. Is it, and we talked about challenges, the sort of the balancing act earlier on, but when it comes to housing, that seems to be a sticking point for a lot of residents across Canada right now. Yeah, I would say if you're moving to Sylvan Lake, you're moving here because of all the amenities we have to offer. Um, we, we are not a sleepy little village with 200 people. We already are a community that's bustling, that has fantastic restaurants, and we have most of the services that you could expect for a community of our size, or a bit larger. I think we often punch above our weight here in Sylvan Lake. But to maintain that level of restaurants and of services and activities and events, we have to have a place for those that work in these industries to live. It is not an option to remain status quo because uh, the alternative is there's not a place to live. Those uh, industries that require that type of worker will not be here. So uh, the status quo just isn't an option on the table, really. Well, I'm glad some, someone's willing to say that. And thank you so much for that. Um, Sylvan Lake has been put on the map because you are so close to the, um, an amazing body of water. Your community has de do literally dove headfirst into embracing the fact that you are on the cusp of an amazing body of water. You have great beachfront. But I want to talk about water in general because it has been a topic a lot of municipalities are dealing with in the last few months. The province has taken a big step into trying to address the water issue and trying to make sure that we have enough for this drought conditions that we're seeing. In Sylvan Lake, are you seeing the water levels at a level that you haven't seen before or are you in a good place? And I, I and say that knowing that other municipalities are going to say Sylvan Lake has nothing to complain about because they're literally on the side of the lake. So they have water coming out their ears. But you will still have to watch that water level just in case it does get to a point where you may not be able to use it as much as you want. That's exactly. Um, in terms of lake levels, which is not where our municipal water comes from, uh, we're lower than last year, but we're not out of historical norms, really. Uh, in terms of municipal water usage, we have what we need, but we recognize that the province is uh, is really preparing for challenging years this year. And we also have to be good neighbors. We have to be good players in that and ensure everyone to conserve water which is what we do every year. We have yeah. ramped up some of our conservation efforts, um, but it's not because we are personally in a desperate situation. It's because we we need to be good Albertans and we need to conserve and use water wisely and do all the things we should and, and really no one needs to water their lawn at 2 p.m. on a hot summer day. So uh, just just reinforcing what we're, really we all should be doing is, is what that looks like for us. 
So uh, on this show, I've been accused on regular occurrences that I only talk about the negative things that go on in municipalities. So I tried to change it up a little bit. And I want to talk about the accomplishments. And I wanted to look back on your time in office, but in general, Sylvan Lake as a whole. What's the thing you are the most proud of when it comes to Sylvan Lake? What is the thing that when you go to Alberta municipalities conferences, when you talk to municipal leaders, heck, when you even talk to your own residents, what's the thing that you boast about that you say, you know what, we have our challenges like every other municipalities, but we're getting this right. I'm, I can't narrow it to one, so you're going to have to let me lead the food here. Go, you, you can take <laughs> as long as you want for this one, Mayor. <laughs> Uh, the first one, it, just a moment in time in Sylvan Lake's history that really uh, I'm so, so proud of was 10 years ago, we were the recipients and the winners of Craft Hockey Bill. That was an incredible journey that our community went on. It was right on the heels of our arena collapsing, a tragedy for our community, and we just felt so much loss out of it. The great Sylvan Laker, Kevin, put in a nomination for Craft Hockey Bill, and our community ran. Uh, we did not do this in a small way. We had millions of people that were voting for us across the country, rooting us on. But more so than just winning at the end, um, you won an NHL game in your community, which was something so neat that we're so proud of. You won a bit of money, uh, which was fantastic, but certainly not enough to build a new arena. But the community pride that came out of it, I've never seen anything like it. There was not a Sylvan Laker that wasn't touched by this campaign. We had computer labs in the high school, people going to vote on lunch hours. We had community <laughs> check stops, teaching people how to vote. We had people parades that filled our streets, probably without a permit. Um, but it, it was just so fantastic. I've never felt community spirit like that. There was flash mobs, there was celebrations. It was just one of those points that I, I'm not sure we'll ever top that, but it really cemented um, that sense of community that we that we have here. And I think it's just built on that, but that was really a highlight for me. The other is I, I think we do, um, I think we do fun really well in Silver Lake. And I, I am really proud of that. I'd heard, you know, the negative comment of it's too busy in Silver Lake. Um, I don't want to go down to the lakefront on a Saturday afternoon in August because it's nuts. And then I heard someone and it completely changed my perspective. And she said, think about this. If you were in downtown Edmonton, downtown Calgary, on a you know five o'clock busy work day, everyone's rushing around to get home, it is the same level of busy. But that is the busy of people stressed out, off to activities, getting to work, that kind of work. This is the busyness of people in vacation mode having fun. And what a different environment that is. This is the busy of people laughing and having a great time. And we are so lucky that we have people that come and gather in Silver Lake. It's really a meeting point for families. And I think we've done a lot of work to create that energy here. We do fantastic events. Our fireworks shows are phenomenal. We, we know how to gather people and throw a heck of a party. And I think that's something that we should just be so proud of. And as a resident, I, I, I get to take advantage of these great events that don't happen in a community of our size. We do punch way above our weight when it comes to the fun. You so I, I used to work for a municipality up in northern Alberta. For those who know, no, but I I can tell you because we we lived I, our municipality backed onto a lake as well. There was always the comparison, right? The we need to be like Sylvan Lake. We need to be able to show our pride like Sylvan Lake because when you go to Sylvan Lake, there is sort of you get you don't feel like you're in Alberta anymore. And I say that with respect because you feel like you're like on a beach, lakeshore, somewhere in the wilderness, and you're just enjoying it. And it you, you sort of transported away from the everyday life that you're dealing with. And, and I say this with respect, and I say this with true honesty, your residents make you feel like you're in a different place when you come there too. I was a tourist coming to your community. We're going to talk about tourism here in about two seconds. And your community made me feel welcome, even though they didn't know who the heck I was. <laughs> they just made me feel welcome while I was just traveling around. And it was just some random Saturday afternoon that I was doing it. You, how do you have so much community pride in Sylvan Lake when 
there are so many worries around the world that are going on that it seems like when you come to Sylvan Lake, you get transported away from the hustle and bustle and the everyday challenges that you're facing. And you're just, it's a different pace in Sylvan Lake, isn't it? It is. And I'm not really answering your question, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even think it was a question, to be honest. I was just trying to make a statement that saying yeah. that like, you are the per, you are the envy of a lot of municipalities who are so close to bodies of water who would love to be able to have what you have, but they can't because in the twenty years ago, hundred years ago, when the municipalities were set up, they weren't for thinking this. But Sylvan Lake seems to be always thinking twelve steps ahead while everyone else is thinking two steps ahead. Well, well done, Sylvan Lakers. Uh, you know, I I think that's a big part of it. I, I also think we have such a neat energy that it's not just on the lakefront. That really translates into our neighborhoods. We have we have some really cool neighborhood connector programs. We do flock parties, we do, and that same energy goes into every little corner of Sylvan Lake. So it's easy to to welcome people and to carry that energy on because it, it's everywhere. It's in every pocket of Sylvan Lake. We we just have such a I, I don't know who started this energy buzz, but it is going and uh we're pretty lucky here. <laughs> we uh, we hope to keep that spark going. So let's talk about some tourism spots in Sylvan Lake for a few minutes, if you don't mind, because that's my favorite spot. And usually if you come on the show, I come to your community, but I've already done that. But I'm going to come back because I feel like I've only scratched the surface. So we've talked about the lake and I'm going to take that off the table. So you can't mention the lake or the beachfront. What are the tourist spots in the community that you say, you know what, even if you just come to the Sylvan Lake, you need to stop here. You need to stop and do this. And you can talk about the lake as well, but what are the other tourism spots? There's so many. Uh, Pagato Park is a real gem in our community, and it, it's still growing. There's there's still work to be done. We uh, It's a 10-year plan, and we'll use every one of those to build it out. But we have fantastic baseball in Silver Lake. A number of years ago, the Silver Lake Gulls came to town. They built this phenomenal stadium in the middle of an 80-acre sports park that is still being built out, but um, they are packed every single night. We have great players. I mean, I don't want to talk about other communities, but if you were choosing between us and some of your other options, Southern Lake is a great place as a college university ball player to come spend your summer. I, I promise we will we will show them a good time here, but we, we bring in some great players, some great ball. It is like you've been transported to a different planet when you are in Gulf Stadium, and they really know how to roll out the red carpet for every single fan that comes to enjoy a game. Not only do they have great baseball, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I like baseball. I like the energy around it. I don't know a whole lot about baseball, but we still go to almost every game because they have a kid's zone. They have entertainment, there's singing, there's mascots. There's all the extra things that make you feel like you've been transported into a real sporting event. And around that facility, we also have a spray park. We have a playground that is in magazines because it is fantastic. And actually, let me just put a little plug. Um, the spray park was built by a whole group of moms that got together 10 years ago and fundraised one taco in a bag at a time uh, to raise that. But it is such a showpiece of our community and fenced in. So you're not going to lose your kids there. Um, there's more ball diamonds on the site. There's a camping that's going in this year. So you'd be able to camp right on site and, and that will build out more in future years with so many neat recreation and opportunities over there. That, that That's really a destination right on the edge of town there. Uh, we also, you know, sporting is, is really big. We have our next source center, which is what came out of our arena collapse was this beautiful multifunctional building that right in the center of it has the Silver Lake Senior Center, which is a great room that hosts theater and dinner events and all kinds of great things right out of the senior center along with great seniors programming that's become such a, a neat little gem and then right outside the steps in the next center they have a great car show that happens once a week and a number of uh, car owners come and show off it's just a short walk from the beach so i think they get some of that traffic and it's become a real uh, real weekly tradition here in the summertime you can go and browse and check out all the neat rides and maybe take in a ball game after that well, you've sold me. I want to come back and watch a baseball game because I, I miss them from living downtown Toronto, going to the Blue Jays. So I'll get the same experience, but probably for fraction the cost. 
the yes. insult. Although like... tickets are a hot commodity, you have to plan ahead. You uh, you certainly can't walk up the night of and and get some seats together. It, it is wild. I hope one day they expand because right now they are the hottest item in Silver Lake. <laughs> so. Where do you go after a long day of council meetings, after a stressful day of doing what you have to do in your day to day lives? And as mayor, is there a spot in the community that you go to decompress and just let it all go, knowing that tomorrow you're going to have to wake back up and try to make Sylvan Lake better than you left it the day before? We have a great trail system. Uh, we are so lucky. I, I have young little kids, so we aren't doing much adventure biking at this point. We're just figuring out training wheels. But um, we have a a great trail system that leads you anywhere in town that um, we love to hop on and, and go for a cruise along the trail system. There's a couple of free little libraries that we check out. Um, and there's always ice cream at the end. So <laughs> there's, there's quite a few good spots in town. That really is our little getaway. It is like you've been transported to a different place. One of our trails in town, right near the edge of the town, has a teepee that's been built over it that is probably 20 feet tall and you can ride your bike through the teepee of sticks. And it, it just feels like you're in this beautiful magic forest that, that is so neat and so fun. So my final question, because I am cautious of time, and I know you're a busy mayor and a busy mom, and I've got to ask the million-dollar question to end this interview. So we started by talking about you. We're ending by talking about Sylvan Lake. And in your opinion, what makes Sylvan Lake such a unique place to live, to work, to raise a family. There is this, I, I'm sure that other communities think they have this, but I'll, I'll tell you, I, I would arm wrestle. Um, I, I think I'm right on this. There is this magic uh, that that is part of our community. I, re I really wish I could identify it or come up with a better word than just, just the magic of Sylvan Lakers together. They, uh, we are a community. I think Craft Hockey Bill was one of the first times I got to experience it that we can move mountains to make community and togetherness and those fun events and activities happen. And uh, I'm not sure what sparks that, but I'm so happy we have it. We, uh, we have a group of people who love to get together, who love to celebrate, who love to gather families together. And Silver Lake's really become the heart of that gathering place for many people across Alberta, but also people that live here. You go down on any Tuesday evening and, uh, it feels like half of Sylvan Lake is having a picnic dinner down on the lakefront. There really is a, a I, I don't know if it's part of the entry before you move here, but you have to love to get together. And Sylvan Lakers do. We, we really show up when there's that opportunity. It's so magic. It's so fun. We see that on the big scale, but also just in the neighborhood scale. I, I mentioned block parties before. They're one of my favorite things that happen in Sylvan Lake. I try and party crash as many of them as I can, but I think it's neat that just even on a on a street level, people love to get together. And we're pretty lucky to have that. Mayor Hansen, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure to sit down with you and talk to you about yourself and talk about Sylvan Lake. Um, I, I, if I could do graphics and I wouldn't copyright on any infringement, I would do the magical like Walt Disney World Tinkerbell flying over Sylvan Lake because it is truly a magical place to live, live or play this from an outsider's perspective. But I want to thank you so much for taking time and doing this and sitting down with me and talking about your community, talking about yourself. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking an interest in us. We are happy to chat about our magic any day. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from the issues on municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations like you saw today with Mayor Megan Hansen on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of the local government's issues in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from coast to coast to coast. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. Music